there. This is Tony Barton of Be Courageous on Watch Kansas. And we are at the GOP convention. We have had an extraordinary day. Yes. Terry Rogers here to my left has been here the entire time. Doing a great job as Thanks, usual. Tony. Glad you. you're here. It's always fun. It, it is fun. Thank and today's been fun. Mm -hmm. And we're ending with fun. We are. You know, I think that's just our new middle name. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. That's right. You know why? Why? Because that's what we do. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, why? Yes, I will. I'm going to do that. I'm excited. We have Attorney General Derek Smith with us. Kansas Attorney General Derek Smith. And, you know, I have a couple of of memories from things that we've actually done together. One that you've done for us and one that we did together. And it was the only time, I don't know if you know this, you probably do, that when we did the Back to Blue rally. I remember it was. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. That was the first time in the history that they had all H uh, police chiefs right. at one event. Really? That I didn't happen. know that. That's yeah, great. Yeah. It was a great event. Yeah. It, it was, and they took a picture together, yeah. and it was yeah. really special because it was. It, it was either the first time or the first time in like 50 years no, it was or the something. First, it was the first, the first time. time. The very first time yeah. they've been able to get them all together yeah. so we appreciate at one you time. Being for that. Yeah, oh, well, it was, was a great uh, deal. It was good of you to organize it and pull everybody together. Yeah. So We worked together. It was yeah. a team effort. It was a lot to get done to make it happen, but you know, it's nice making history. And the second time was one where we had to come visit you and, and work through some things with the uh, uh, campaign issue and it all worked out real well so yeah. I thank you for uh, being a part of those, mm -hmm. those you events bet. And, and for your help so you bet. You're you're it's such an efficient office absolutely and your customer well, service is spectacular thank you very much we pride ourselves on that and you know we're human and when we make an error or something doesn't go quite right we fix it so that's, I appreciate it when you folks do. you know that's right reach back out to us mm -hmm. you bet thank you Derek. you bet all right, so what I, what I normally do is I usually give the time to, to the interviewee to kind of ask them what's on your mind and what's on your heart. What would you like to share with us today? Well, you know, there's so much to talk about. I mean, it's Always. been a great weekend so far at the Republican Convention. Everybody's fired up and, and great to be back together again. Yes. And post, uh, maybe it's not quite post-COVID, but on the back end of the Reports. pandemic. That's right. Uh, you know, people are hungry for that sort of interaction with other human beings. And, yes. of course, most folks here are like-minded, so that's Thanks an added matter. plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in. Uh, uh, he put, he says mildly, a lot of interest in sort of plotting our course through the Biden years, yeah. making sure that we, you know, hold on to our liberties and make sure the state can stand up when it needs to stand up, and really push back on things that that, that we just don't agree with here in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, laid on top of that, we have the Kelly years. And so there's a lot going on right now that I think brings Republicans really together. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just so, um, it, 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 it's very motivating, I think, for those of us that really want to see things change. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think there's a, a bit of, uh, well, a lot of concern in regards to what's happening through the Biden years and what's yeah. happening in Kansas and, for example, the south, the southern border and what's going on there. Right. How does that affect us here in Kansas? Well, it all affects us. You know, the big picture is you lose elections or the other side, you know, prevails. However, that all turns out. And obviously there are consequences. And so, you know, we've all lived through the back and forth of sometimes our team wins and sometimes it doesn't go so well. And we expect differences in policy approaches. So that's not unexpected. But it seems to me what's different this time is that there are so many efforts to make really permanent changes mm -hmm. in how we govern ourselves together as a very diverse people in this country, philosophically diverse in terms of our political views. You know, the other side seems to have this view that because they have control of the U.S. House, the U.S. Senate, and the presidency, and, you know, the last time they had that, they gave us Obamacare, and they gave us Dodd-Frank, and then they lost the majority. Mm -hmm. And I think the lesson they drew from that was they got to go bigger, faster. Get it all, get it all done. Get, get right. it all done. And right. so, my goodness, the stuff they're trying to cram through, whether it's D.C. statehood, which is something we objected to yes. today, yes. Thank um, you. whether it's packing the Supreme Court to try to sort of change the rules so mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, they can get a, a number of other perhaps non-textualist justices, justices who don't view the Constitution the way we do as, mm -hmm. as you know, you read the words on the page and apply it. It's a relatively straightforward mm -hmm. for those of us on our side of the ledger. They seem to want to make several of these changes all at once. HR1, the change to the yeah. election uh, rules, would be devastating. Yeah, yeah. But you look at all of those things and they're all in the nature of, uh, from their vantage point, trying to make sure that if they lose their majorities in two years, they've made permanent structural yeah. change. 
uh, that allows them to hold on. And I think that's really concerning this time. And I think most of our folks, uh, more conservative minded folks, they understand what's at stake. They don't have to articulate, they just know it. That, that this is an effort by the other side to change the rules part way through the game. Yeah. And so, you know, we've seen some of that here in Kansas. I'm not suggesting so much to change the rules because our Republican supermajorities in the legislature wouldn't allow it to happen. Yeah, thank goodness for that. But nonetheless, sort of in the same spirit, I mean, we lost that governor's race last time, and now Governor Kelly's gotten three new appointments on the Kansas Supreme Court, Absolutely. three out of right. seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to have an effect on us for a generation. It's true. Because we, you know, weren't able to hold things together. And so I just, you know, those are the things that worry me. And I think they worry a lot of our folks on the Republican it's side. True. It's true. Yes. And, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, so I know that um, you've joined with some of your fellow attorneys general throughout the country. Right. Um, could you speak to that a little bit? Well, we always work together with like-minded counterparts in other states. Mm -hmm. And during the Obama years, uh, you know, there was a group of us, about eight or ten of us, kind of at the core, uh, who uh, really worked together regularly to challenge Obama, in court, challenge Obama mm -hmm. administration policies that we didn't just think were bad ideas, but were bad ideas that were also illegal, we thought. Mm -hmm. So we challenged Obamacare, we challenged Dodd-Frank, we challenged a lot of the EPA regulations that came out back then. Mm -hmm. And we won some and we lost some. The federal government's a tough opponent, but mm -hmm. we did Certainly. win some. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have to do that during the Trump years. Because the Trump administration had a very similar view to our own about respecting state authority. Uh, but now we're back and the shoe's on the other foot again. And you know, President Biden has really sort of hit the accelerator on pushing the envelope on federal authority. So we've, we've had to step in and challenge some of that. We filed, uh, I believe it's four lawsuits now in the first, whatever it is, three months or so of the Biden administration. Uh, we've challenged an effort by the president to, by executive order, do an end run around Congress and implement a piece of the so-called Green New Deal. Mm -hmm. We've challenged a, a, a decision by the president to cancel the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline. Right. You know, in our view, uh, I mean, the pipeline's important and petroleum supply is important, but even more important, is the whole concept of due process. I mean, who's ever going to invest in a large economic development project yeah. if a government can say, here's your permit, right. you invest billions of dollars relying on it, mm -hmm. and then in 24 hours, no hearing, no notice, no nothing, sure. the government says we're done. We're yeah. changing Very our good point. So, so how does that impact in regards to states' rights? When you look yeah. at that, and I know there's other states following the pipeline where they're right. filing you know, part of the same lawsuits. I mean, right. can he actually do this and get away with this? Well, we're going to find out. I mean, ultimately, it will be federal courts that answer that question. We think we have the better legal argument that the president and his team have overstepped their legal authority. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty optimistic, and I hope this bears out, that our ability to win those arguments in court will be better today mm -hmm. than it was even in the Obama years because of President Trump. He gave us so many more good, solid, textualist, originalist, constitutionalist mm -hmm. federal judges and justices mm -hmm. who we think are going to be more likely to see these issues the way we see them. Not because they're conservatives or Republicans, but because they have a similar view of the role of courts and of the separation of powers and of what the text of the Constitution means. Exactly. So we're very optimistic, but you know, we won't know until the dust settles. That's right. So timeline, how far, how long do you think it is going to be between now and lawsuits that are already there, right? Yeah. Do you think it'll reach the Supreme Court? I do think several of these are going to wind up at the High Court. In fact, one of them we actually filed um, with the High Court. It's kind of a very unusual procedural posture, but it's one, it's an immigration related lawsuit, and it's a case where there's something called the public charge rule. It's been on the books for more than 100 years in the U.S. It's not a new concept, mm -hmm. but the basic philosophy is that for immigrants who come here lawfully and then want to become permanent residents, get a green card. Mm -hmm that we're supposed to be giving preference to those who can demonstrate that they're likely to be self-sufficient, stand on their own, right. as opposed to those who can't demonstrate that and are more likely to become a public charge. They're here, they're drawing upon welfare programs, social service okay. programs. That's been the law for a very long time. President Trump really sort of beefed that up by modifying the definition of public charge. Mm -hmm. We think his definition was very reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, not surprisingly, the Biden administration disagrees. Okay. And they have, they've tried this sort of switcheroo where they want to just abandon defending the Trump policies. And we've, we've actually, we're trying to intervene in this case at the U.S. Supreme Court level mm -hmm. for the purpose of defending 
the Trump policies because nobody else is going to do it. Don't know if it's going to you know work out or not. So we already have one that's in front of the high court. The others we've started in the traditional manner, and uh, you know it, it'll it, it's probably going to be measured in many months or years. That's the reality of litigation. That's why it's so important we went back to the U.S. House, the U.S. Senate, hopefully both, but at least one in two years, um, because that's really the way you stop this stuff. Well, it is, but you know what's really weighing heavy on my heart? There are so many things that are weighing heavy on my heart, but the, the D.C. statehood, oh. really I have a problem with that. I just don't understand how our founding fathers can set up this district and say purposefully it's not going to be a state. How can they find any constitutionality in what they're doing? Well, I agree. In fact, a, a group of us uh, joined together about two weeks ago now and, and uh, wrote to our friends in Congress, uh, our friends in Congress, mm -hmm. and, uh, and told them, look, we don't think this is constitutional. Right. We don't think Congress has the authority by simple enactment of statute to transform the District of Columbia, a constitutionally authorized federal mm -hmm. district, into another state. Uh, you might be able to retrocede the land back to Maryland, as happened with part of the That's district so um, in, 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 with Virginia back in 18, whatever year that was. Mm -hmm. But you can't just morph it into a new state. There's a whole different process for creating a state, and this ain't it. Right. Uh, so if you try it, we're going to sue you because we don't think that you've got the legal authority. I'm hopeful, obviously, the U.S. House has just kind of pushed that right through, but I'm really hopeful the Senate will be able to stop it. No, I'm, I'm really not, hopeful. I'm really now, isn't hoping. the same attempt being made in, in regards to Puerto Rico, too, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, the arguments of Puerto Rico obviously are a little bit different because it's not the federal district, which has this unique constitutional sure. provision. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably why our friends on the other side have really started with D.C. It's, it's more proximate, and in some ways it's the bigger fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think their theory probably is if they win that, then others follow more easily. Sure. Whereas the other way around wouldn't be so true. I don't know, I'm not in their strategy session. Well, but, but yeah. they, are, they are rushing to get as much done as they can. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty clear. Exactly. It's, it's pretty clear. And it's mm -hmm. destructive. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, I'm looking at this whole thing that they're doing and the multiple executive orders that he signed and what's transpired since. I can't find any of it as something that's good for the country. Well, and look at this pork packing effort. Yeah, I mean, that's one that I think has really, yeah. I mean, a lot of folks have obviously noticed, but I, I'm not sure the full magnitude of that has really sort of permeated into the public conversation, but it's only been tried once in our history. I mean, the, there have been times back in the 19th century when Congress changed the number of justices until it was finally fixed at nine in whatever year that was, 1869 or something. Um, but never in those early changes was that motivated by an effort to really get a different outcome on the court. They were really in the early days of the Republic experimenting with just the logistics. What's the right number to make this thing function well? Um, the one time in our history when there was an effort to pack the court, to change the rules, to change the structure, to add justices, for the purpose of reversing decisions yeah. mm -hmm. um, was in the 1930s. Sure. And uh, you know, even Democrats, in the U.S. Senate objected to that when Franklin Roosevelt right. was proposing it. Right. Um, but here we are again, going down that same road, and uh, it would be just as bad an idea now. Yes. I, I think it would be really devastating to the independence of the court. I agree, but here, here we are going through it again, but this time without benefit of a media, you know, journalists yeah. and media who are telling the American people yeah, what's happening. Right. So, or, or they're presenting it in a way in where a way it that, makes it appear like it's a good right, thing, right, right. something that we exactly. should do. I mean, can you imagine if two years ago, during the Trump administration, when Republicans controlled the U.S. Senate, if we had proposed sure. this? Oh, imagine yes. if we had proposed yes. increasing yes. the number of justices to 13. Yes. Well, we just need 13 everywhere. because there are 13 yeah. circuits yeah. and it's a big yeah. workload. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other side would have never bought it because it wouldn't have been true, and it's right. not true now That's when they're right. making the argument. That's right. Same You're thing. exactly right. Exactly. Wow. Now, you've got some exciting things going on. We've got a lot on. going on, and absolutely. Yeah. And anything else you want to talk about, maybe, that you've got coming up in your future? Well, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, it's been a great privilege to uh, you know, serve as Attorney General, as you know. I've really enjoyed it. But, you've done a great job. Well, thank you. And uh, uh, But these are not designed to be forever jobs. You're supposed to serve and then allow somebody else to take a turn. And I think it's about time to let somebody else take their turn as AG. So. Uh, I'm going a different direction this time. As you know, I'll be a candidate, well, I am a candidate for governor in 2022. 
Um, I hope we all agree we need a new governor. I don't think there's a lot of debate about that among the <laughs> folks of our, our argument yeah. about that. Um, yeah. we, you know, we need good Republican right of center leadership. It's got the right instincts and the ability to govern to keep our team kind of pulling together and actually get some stuff done. Uh, and not, you know, turn the veto pen into a weapon. And that's certainly where we've been uh, with our current governor. Um, you know, Republicans have been great to me and Kansans have been allowing me to serve all these years in these different roles. And we've always added a few more votes every new time I've run for election. I hope we can continue that this time around because at the end of the day, you got to win. Right. You've got to win. Yeah. If we don't win, these are academic discussions. We get four more years of Laura Kelly. we got to win. And that means get this team together and let's go do this. Okay. Uh, and I think the team is growing and coming together because they certainly, or we certainly want something different. We oh. certainly do not want another four years of Laura Kelly. Right. And exactly. I'm making that as an official statement. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we certainly uh, wish you all the best. Well, Absolutely. thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming and, in. Thanks, thanks and for having me on. on. I'd love to do it again. Let's go down the road and have you in, and we can sit and discuss these issues. That's right. That, that sounds, sounds great. So thank you I'd so love much it. for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Terry, thank you. Always Appreciate a pleasure it. to talk to you. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thanks. And on that note, we're done. Be courageous. <laughs> <laughs>